Morning, folks. Uh, before I get on to this acrylic, uh, not acrylic, this oil painting, uh, uh, this is sort of a Norfolk scene, made, made up. Uh, the East Anglian landscape is pretty flat, but uh, not entirely flat, and it's very lovely. And we were up in uh, near East Anglia uh, in Rutland a couple of months ago. Uh, never been there, but we had a wonderful t uh, week with friends, and uh, I did some paintings uh, from memory of it. I don't, I don't really like working for photographs. Uh, anyway, I primed this bit of uh, uh, MDF, th three millimetres of MDF. I'll show you. Uh, I bought these online. They're, they're, they're okay. Uh, the, 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 there's a they're what the uh, A3 A3. I go 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 to one side a bit of a rough roughage, and then added some PVA glue and uh, acrylic burnt sienna or burnt umber uh, to seal to seal the uh, surface. But you don't really need to to go to that extent if if you are using or you want to use uh, acrylics on this, you can paint straight on it, you don't have to prime it. it the, the, uh, the acrylic itself, the acrylic paint itself is, is the primer um, and waterproof for its, uh, its acrylic. Uh, but, but I think when you, if you're going to use wall, um, oil on this, you seal the surface so that it doesn't soak in and end up being dry. Uh, something, I, I just want to clarify something. One of my recent followers likes what I do, obviously, otherwise he wouldn't follow me. Uh, he, uh, uh, ah, the question was, am I painting on paper? Oil, well, well I'm doing an oil painting. Well, this is the paper I'm using. It's, um, it's acid-free. 15 sheet block. I've got another three blocks of it just in case the range got, decided to sell out. Um, this has got a, 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 a matte surface and if you look carefully you can see it's printed like imprinted with very fine tooth so that you can grab the paint. Uh, at the back of it it's got a, a, a polythene poly plastic coating here, or I, I think it's stuck on. Uh, it stops the paint, the, the oil, because the oil, this soaks up the oil, which is lovely, but it stops it going through with this barrier, and that is quite unusual, I, I think. So that's why I use it. It's relatively inexpensive. It's about seven pounds for a 15 sheet pad, and you can cut it in half into uh, two A4s, which I do. I'll, I'll show you, I've got one. I did a, a, one on the Sunday, I think, and, and I cut a sheet in half. So there we are. That's the uh, rough side. Well, not rough, that's the, the side you paint on. That's the side that's got the plastic shiny surface so I hope that clears up so you don't have to keep asking me uh, I'm just going to blow my nose it's uh, very cold in, in London or happy in London <coughs> we're on the outskirts of London but we're, we're classed as uh, greater London but we're, we're also uh, North East Surrey. Uh, right, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go put the lights on. The, problem is the lights disappeared, so I'm just going to put a backlight on. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, we have that one. Uh, so let's just uh, load the pallet. I'm only going to do a. Uh, uh, where's my white? Looks me white, looks me Italian. Uh, I know it. Uh, I, I, I only use, well, I'm only using five colours. 
uh, cadmium yellow pale, a bit of uh, yellow ochre, some ultramarine and some cadmium red or vermilion and burnt sienna. The, the black I've got here is not a colour, it's a, a neutral and very useful uh, but mostly I use uh, Payne's Grey for the same reason uh, but I've got, I've got a big tube my palette, Alan Owen, sent me several of these tubes and he decided to pack up uh, with uh, oil painting in favour of watercolour he's a very fine watercolour painter that I've, I've been Alan and I, Alan and Owen and I have been friends for some years now He's getting very old, but then so am I. My birthday this week, 79, would you believe? You wouldn't think it, would you? Tee hee. Uh, you know, let's squeeze a bit of that out. Uh, I'm not sure about the ultramarine. Uh, the ultramarine, I've got a new tube here. The ultramarine is uh, just a little bit uh, lazy. It's sort of, it's, it's, it seems to be the fastest drying colour on the palette. But anyway, five colours, and I use the three primaries basically to mix uh, greens. So I don't use, I have used green, I've got green tubes of it here and there. But um, if you're a beginner or a basic painter, uh, you're tempted to put out all your colours on a bigger palette. Uh, oh, I was going to put the white out, wasn't I? Um, but it, it just makes it very complicated. If, the more colours you have, the more confusion you have as beginners. When you're a Monet, you can put out what you want because he, like, People at Monet have learnt, and I'm learning, uh, the colour mixes. What you, what, what you can do with a red and a blue, plus a touch of black or paint grey. Uh, but anyway, let's start. I'm going to... Uh, oh, watercolour brushes. I did a watercolour yesterday for Patreon. And I apologise to Patreon because they were paying out, and I don't, I don't get a lot. So you can always support me on Patreon. It's very cheap. You don't have to stay with me. You can the month subscription link. Cancel it. Uh, that is going to be in there. These two brushes are going to be there. My lovely rigger. Uh, right, where were we? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to paint the sky now. Having said what I said. Uh, Let's use this brush. I put a nail through it because the the, the uh, bristles stuck are uh, stuck together and pushed into this ferrule, but it it came out. So I put a little panel pin or veneer pin through it and bashed it over. It's trimmed off the excess with a pair of pliers. So here we go. Let's uh, oh, we want a bit of bit of oil, bit of linseed oil. Yeah, so, and, uh, so what seems to have happened is that, uh, uh, for whatever reason, Patreon are paying out later than they were uh, last year. For example, they were paying out on the first day of the month, but it went to the fifth day of the month, and then a couple of days added on. So I got a bit anxious about that, because the Patreon pays for all these colours all my tubes of paint and the boards and I've got six three foot by four foot uh, boards of three millimetre MDF cuts easy it's got one side is, is a bit rough and I, I paint on the rough side lovely lovely stuff but it all costs money uh, right okay so let's have a bit of let's have a bit of a sky let's have a bit of ultramarine bit of that bit of black Yes, I, I don't spend a lot of time on the skies. 
But you can hear the tooth on it, can't you? Right, up the red. More, more, more blue, more blue. These brushes are quite uh, inexpensive. Well, on Saturday I did uh, uh, an exercise on uh, using worn out brushes, like these things. This one will go like that eventually. Look, that's what it is at its best. You can texture with it very easily, and I've got several of them, and they are really lovely to work with. Blue, more blue. Oops. I'm going to paint white into that old cloud, which won't be white. That'll be a mixture of uh, white and uh, a bit of burnt sienna. Bear with me, with me while I do this. I'm going to have a low horizon, I like a low horizon. But I'm going to have a, a sort of a field, grass field, a bit of a pond, and some trees in the background. You can you can put the back of the uh, middle distance in, like the tree line, first, and then paint down to it. You get a bit of an impact. Um, but I tend not to. I tend to, to paint over this. But this then will uh, be a little bit dry. Look at that, when you get older, your skin gets all these blotches. I'm always uh, fashioning myself. I can't run as fast as I used to. Now, I've been painting for well enough, uh, seriously, for 50 years, I would say, with some time out. Okay, let's uh, burn Sienna. Just that little bit of colour. Now I'll we'll put a little bit over the top there. Right, okay, that's that do. Uh, find a brush for... That's a good brush. It's small, but it does big things. Um, so I want to, but then there's the other brushes uh, do the same. This one has got a bit, didn't get clean quite a lot. I'll use this one. Uh, right, okay, now we're going to mix um, Bit of ultramarine. Let's go down there. Bit of red. A lump of yellow. Three colours. Bit of a green.
Well, if you want to darken it, you can always put a bit of paint grey or black. Mm. You want that bit darker than that, then it makes it more blue. Blue with that yellow bit of red. I try to get these trees with a, a, a reasonable shape. Now I like this because I've done, put, got a dividing line there really. I'm going to put a bit of blue in there. Okay, so there's a sort of a basis of a meadow. Keep, keep getting the shadow in. Oh, just... Got a bit wet with this, but it's uh, no matter. A bit of black, a bit of red. Look, you could get your shadow in underneath the, the main bits of the tree. You want a dark, darker horizon because I'm going to put my grasses up and what you'll see in there. Oh, this old Harry the cat come up to see me, see what I'm doing. Hello, boy. Lovely cat. He's a quite a large cat. He's about eight years old now. Absolute gorgeous. Ginger's Tom, beautiful, lovely nature. A little bit more colour, right? Right, I was going to do a bit of uh, something in there, so a bit of blue, a bit of white. Try and give a bit of an impression, or a bit darker than that. Oh, he's gone. He was having, yeah, he's meowing now. He was having a bit of a punch up with my, the lace and my, with my sort of trainer shoes. Oh, listen to him. Well, I'll get a cloth and clean the brush now. Oi! They're disturbing my, my friends. Oops. Uh, you know, sometimes you know, I, I, with these things I, I put a, a church in because being Norfolk, uh, oh Harry, can you hear him? Because nobody's paying attention to him. It's good. You can always put a church or something. So, yeah, one of my regulars, well, was a regular, um, 
Maxine, so I don't know if she's still around. I hope she is. Um, she lives in Norfolk and um, she said, Dave, you won't uh, find the, the landscape without any churches in it because Norfolk is full of them. God! What a noise. Right now, now what we're going to do now is uh, texture with uh, one of these uh, worn out brushes. Right, now we're going to put a yellow, a touch of yellow ochre and a bit of white, a bit of oil. With a nice bright bit of colour in here. Just enough here, look. I've got a feel there now. So easy when you know how. But I've done hundreds of these, so I should be quite good at them, shouldn't I? But put a bit more white in there so we can just just lift that up a bit, just feather it. So we, we really call this an exercise in texture. If that's a uh, horizontal, it doesn't matter, either. it's a field. Okay, yeah, look at that. It's the contrast between the, the dark and the light called contrast or values. All right, now I'm going to put in some dark, darker stuff now in the front because I've, I've, I haven't left myself much wriggle room to to put in a pond but uh, what I'll do is a uh, bit of blue, bit of red, bit of that. I've done that there, people. Where was I mixing? You can use, uh, well, I've got other brushes that do, do this. Look, this one. That's worn out. Uh, this one. That was a, good, a really good brush, but it's not anymore. But it is for texture. But I won't, I won't sort of throw in the brushes because so, I've got to clean them. If you get oil paint on your clothes and it's it's still moist, you you can you can easily get it out using uh, some uh, uh, dishwasher, not dishwasher, washing up liquid. It's a lovely way of cleaning your brushes. I love oil painting, it's, I've really settled on this, I don't do many watercolours at the moment. Oh, let's just get a bit of water going in there. Oh, let's get a little bit of darker. Stuff in it. Mm, no, I think I've lost the contrast there. Let's go back, go back a bit, and then just.
Well, I don't want a solid line, but I can't feather it. I go back with the bit of the old black. Right, I might, I've been up to done all this, I might just open that up a bit more. The, so I have a bigger gap, but you don't want to put your gap right in the, in the centre like I have. <laughs> Move it to one side, side. Move the, the, the hole to one side, not in the middle, uh, like I just have. Um, right, okay, a bit of that, a bit of red. Look, it's a stipple. I want to put a, I'm going to put a bit of a tree in there, or a bit of a something growing out of the the brush. Also, that by doing this, I can I can reflect it in the water that I'm going to put in. Put a bit more dark in, in there. Right, now we're going to have an exercise in uh, water. I'm going to clean this brush. I've got friends who supply me with uh, old toweling. A bit of, bit of, you don't want it white. It's reflecting a sky which is uh, overhead. Now, this reminds me of a pond that we go. By, on our bike rides, weekly bike rides, although we've suspended them because it's just too cold. At our age, we don't actually go to chill. Of that, I'm going to put another tree down there. 
just to block it. Just uh, dragging down the base of those uh, reeds, grasses, whatever. Oops, a bit dark in here. See how easy that was. Now it's not perfect, I know, because I'm demonstrating. I don't do anything for myself. Ever since I've joined YouTube, oh, many years ago now, um, I've just painted for the people that follow me. I'm not doing great on it. I think I've about 23 and a half, 23,600 subscribers, but. There are others uh, way beyond me. Alright, so I just want to... Just put that in there. So the edge of the pond. And uh, we've got to do something with that, so we'll uh, change that. Don't believe that you shouldn't use black. Black is a very useful colour. It mixes very well with with other colours. So you can get your darks in. Right, let's get that a bit darker in that shadow there. It sounds like the you can hear that is the uh, the electric uh, road sweeper. <laughs> All right, let's get a little bit dark in here because that's quite dark above. Okay, I was going to open that that up there, wasn't I? No, I think I'll leave that. I think that's quite a nice little, little painting there. Just a little bit. Now on our little bit of pond, it's in a, in a large park in South, <coughs> South East London. It's Malden Hall Park for those that are local to it. Uh, there's a boardwalk that was put in by the National Trust some years ago, several years ago, and this, this pond sort of arrived after a flood and, and it's, it's got loads of fish in it now, large fish that, that sort of floated in. Uh, so I want a little bit of texture, let's have a bit of, bit, bit of red. Sort of a poppy. Right, okay, I, I, I'm not going to put any birds in. I've got a bit of a... bit of a scratch. Right, well, there we are. Um, I, I, I should bring that down a little bit because we're going uphill there. Now the worst thing you can do is fiddle, which is what I'm doing. So there's quite a lot of contrast in this, I'm glad to say. 
Um, I'm going to put it in a, or if I've got a mount. I haven't got a frame that size. Get this pallet going for quite a time. I've got others, but this this MDF is lovely to to work on. You don't want a great big pallet when you've got a, a limited uh, painting space. I have got other easels. I've got a, a studio radial easel behind me, which is collapsed. Um, it takes up quite a bit of room, but it's a lovely easel, and I've got a. Um, a, a I think it's a Frank Herring uh, tubular metal easel, which I don't use very often. But this setup is is on a Mabef uh, box easel, um, and it's very very uh, useful when I demonstrate outside. For those that want me to demonstrate, I I take I take this easel. It, Go, it goes up in a matter of a uh, couple of minutes and then I can it's got a nice slide and, and uh, people can see what I'm doing uh, right let's see if I've got a uh, that one let's see what this is like move that up a bit mm -hmm. well I think we've got a one with a bigger Aperture. I don't know if I have it. Uh, most of them are going to get a bit dirty now. Well, there we are. It's, it's bigger than that, but uh, there we are. A little folk uh, field across a pond. It's taken me a long time to learn to do this, and I'm giving all my secrets away. But put your, your, your sky colour in and get your background with your reeds and all that sort of stuff, the other side of the pond, and then gently just drag it down into the, into the water or into the blue, into the sky, and then you'll get that reflection and it looks real. Uh, hope you like this one, folks. Thanks for, for watching. I'm just gonna, uh, there we are. So there we are. Norfolk, the whole of Norfolk on a piece of board. Yeah. See you soon. Bye bye.